guys, in today's video, I want to show you seven gimbal shots that you guys can try the next time you are out filming. These are seven shots that will be awesome to have in your repertoire. That is a cool word when you guys are thinking of cool ideas when you're out in the field. I'm shooting on my a7 III with the Zion Crane 2S. You can do this on any setup really. I'm gonna walk you guys through each and every single shot and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how they can all work well together. So that's enough about that. Let's actually get into the shots. Shot one, let's start it off with a follow shot. Basically for this one, you wanna just get behind your subject and track them in a nice smooth way, trying to match your speed with theirs. I like to generally keep my subject in the center as it has a better look. Experiment with different angles, getting down and low often creates a more grand feeling and getting high can show more of your surrounding area and where your subject may be. I love doing this shot anytime I have the opportunity with some leading lines and you can see by getting slightly lower and the, having those leading lines disappear behind your subject creates a really cool effect. That vanishing point really draws the attention to your subject. This shot is awesome for opening any scenes. Maybe it's the first shot of your video. It's a nice introductory shot to your viewer to really show them where you are, what's going on. Notice in all of these shots, whenever I'm shooting on a gimbal, I'm really trying to do a heel to toe movement that is gonna make my shots way smoother. I'm not gonna be jerking the camera as I'm doing these very hard steps. I wanna keep nice flow and you might feel a little strange doing it at the beginning, but once you master what I like to call the ninja walk, it's gonna make your gimbal shots way, way smoother. Next up we have shot two and this is gonna be a tracking shot. Also relatively simple, but can be hugely effective when you guys do it in the right way. Awesome way to show your subjects moving through their environment, really just giving the viewer a sense of where they are and what's going on. Note how I like to keep my subject on the back third of my frame, just to give them that appropriate nose room. If you bring the front of that frame too close up to their face, it's gonna give a bit of a claustrophobic feeling. The viewer can't really see what's coming next and it can feel a bit uncomfortable whether you're doing it on something like a face or even if you guys are going down to get a nice tracking shot of the feet, whatever it might be, make sure that you are just placing that subject on the back third of your frame. Shot three is gonna be a wipe transition. Now this shot actually consists of two separate shots that we are gonna to cut together and merge them to make a seamless wipe transition between the two. Has a really cool effect, very easy. No special editing needed. You can do this with just a simple cut if you film it in the correct way. We're gonna grab our first shot, which is just gonna be a close up of Hannah's feet here. And right at the end of the shot, I'm just gonna dip my camera behind this like long grass bush and hopefully get it almost blacked out or at least have the whole frame blocked and then with our second shot that we are going to be getting a much wider shot here of Hannah we are going to start our frame from that blocked out tree and when you put them together you can cut a few things to look out for this is you want to try and match your speed from your first and second shot otherwise they're not going to flow together as well the second thing you might notice is when I was capturing my second shot for the transition it can sometimes be a bit tricky with focus I didn't want to switch over into manual focus so what I did was just keep my camera slightly out from that frame block object that I was going to use and then just before I did the shot I would dip it behind and pull it back out again and my camera wouldn't have time to readjust that focus to that tree meaning that my focus would be perfectly focused on Hannah. Shot four is gonna be a wraparound shot. This is one of my favorite shots to capture when I'm shooting on my gimbal and it can have such an awesome effect if you do it right. For this one, we had Hannah standing still and I just did a wrapping motion around her. I like to just look up. It gives much more of a grand feeling and you get more of that parallax effect of that background really rushing past. Looks really fast, has a really awesome effect. If you wanna get fancy with it, you can even add a bit of a speed ramp at the beginning and at the end and you can have it come in really fast slow all the way down on your subject's face and then speed back up out of frame. Definitely an opportunity here for some sort of other transition. Shot five is gonna be a reveal shot where we're just gonna have Hannah kind of entering into our frame. This is gonna take a little bit of choreography and we're just gonna try and time it nicely to have my camera moving before Hannah enters into frame and then have her walking in. This is a great shot for when you want to change locations. Maybe you want to introduce a new character or you want to just move to a new location by shifting it and having that blank frame and then having your subject walk into it is a perfect way to transition to a new location. 
Shot six is gonna be a focus shift. This one can be a little bit tricky to get, but once you nail it, it has a really impactful effect. Basically what you wanna do is set your camera over into manual focus, get your focus on your subject or whatever it is you might be filming, and then pull all the way back, having that subject go completely out of focus. Then once we're in post, we can reverse that shot and our shot is gonna start from out of focus, punch all the way in to a perfectly in focus shot. The reason why we reverse it is because it's just much easier to make sure that our ending point is gonna be perfectly in focus. If you were to start from back and have everything out of focus, you might hesitate as you get to that point. Reversing it works really well and make sure that you're gonna get that shot perfectly in focus every time. Shot seven and our last shot for this video is gonna be a mini jib shot or a crane shot. You could even maybe pass this as a drone shot if you were really tall and got that gimbal up high. Basically what we're gonna be doing for this one is just starting out nice and close on Hannah and we are just gonna pull all the way back. This is an awesome shot for ending off your scene, maybe just really pulling back and giving the viewer a feeling of leaving the scene. Otherwise it can be a nice opportunity to just show off a bit of that location as you're getting a really nice vantage point most likely drone shot. So those are our seven gimbal shots. You've seen them as individuals and how we managed to capture each one of those shots. Now let's take a look at them all in one sequence with some cool music and editing techniques. So those are the seven shots all together. As you can see, you can fully build like an entire video out of these shots. They are great shots to have as a staple when you guys are out and filming gimbal videos. You can fall back on them whenever you can't think of any creative shots. And you can get as creative as you want with these and add in different little details and change them up. But having them as your basic seven shots to shoot any gimbal videos is gonna be really useful for you guys in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button. If you wanna see more like this, hit subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.